Back again for another video and today you might notice that the setting here is a little bit different. That's because I'm actually filming for my very first buy to let property that's currently under renovation. So today I'm going to be walking you through the whole process. I'm going to be showing you some of the photos before the renovation and talk about why I purchased the property. And then I'm going to show you some photos again and we're going to talk about what I'm changing in the property and renovating and why. And then I'm going to give you a bit of a walk around the property itself and talk about how everything is going. And I'm going to go a bit more in depth on the numbers and talk about the costs that I've incurred so far and everything that I've budgeted for. And I'm also going to talk about how I made the offer and that kind of process as well. So make sure you don't go anywhere and be sure to watch the video all the way through to the end so that you can understand everything about my first buy to let property. This should help you better understand the process of buy to let and if you've got any questions be sure to leave them down in the comments below. So let's jump straight into it and let's start with the worst room in the house which is the bathroom. So this is what the bathroom looked like before I started the renovations and this is exactly the kind of bathroom that you want if you're an investor. But why is that? Well basically it's absolutely horrific. Imagine if you're a newly married couple about to have their first child or if you're a professional earning a decent wage and you want to buy your first property instead of renting. Is this the kind of bathroom that you want? Absolutely not and that's why it makes it great from an investor's standpoint because regular people aren't going to want a bathroom or a property like this. So the things that stand out for me in this photo are first the carpet flooring. Regular people don't want carpet in their bathroom. They want nice, fancy porcelain tile. So this is really great for an investor because it means that I can buy this property and add value to this property by replacing the carpet with tiles. Next up, we have the color scheme. Lime green is probably not most people's dream bathroom color. Some people might absolutely love lime green and want their entire house lime green, but 99% of the population probably don't. So this is an instant turn off for pretty much everyone out there, which means that I, as an investor, can come in and pick up a good deal. A few other points to note. You can probably see that there's a little bit of mold in the top corner of the bathroom. The ceiling was really, really moldy. And I've got another photo that shows that a bit better here. Now this might turn off most people and really scare them because they might think that there's a roof problem that's caused this mold or rising damp that's gone up the entire house. But actually, if you take a second to look, you'll notice that there's no ventilation fan in this bathroom. And on top of that, when I went to go and view the property, the windows were actually locked shut and could only be opened by an Allen key and not a regular key. The previous tenant was like 80 years old or something like that. So chances are is that she never even opened the windows in this bathroom and that's what caused the mold. Next room we have here is the kitchen and this is what it looked like before I started the renovations. And as you can see, there's just a lot of different colors going on here. Firstly, we have the wall, which is like a weird yellowy orange kind of mixed color. Now it probably shows up a little bit better on the video, but you can see that it's almost like brown stained. Like you've got some bits like here that are quite dark and then some bits over here that are quite light, some patches that are really light. And especially as when you go up a little bit closer, you can see the amount of like almost speckled dirt and just a bunch of different colors that they've got going on with this wall. So it's not really like a consistent color scheme and it's just a bit much. And on top of that, you've got this wood panel on the back of the kitchen itself, this white panel next to that. You've got these like beigey kind of tiles, this white marble laminate effect worktop, a metal sink, a white fridge. There's just a bit too many colors going on here and it's probably not most people's dream kitchen. The average person probably wants a nice modern gray or a modern white, or maybe even a bit more of a traditional oak effect, but probably not this yellowy orange kind of mixed color that's going on. So while I was walking around this property, I was trying to consider two things. Firstly, what kind of things are in the property that are gonna put off regular people, like the greens in the bathroom, these like mixed yellowy orange in the kitchen, you know, you've got these moldy stained carpets, a very dirty property, lots of different things that are gonna put off the average first time buyer. And secondly, I'm really trying to figure out where exactly I can add value. Now, I suppose these kind of fall hand in hand. 
But as an example, obviously a nice white coat in the kitchen or a nice gray tile in the bathroom and a white coat everywhere around the house is gonna make the property 100 times more desirable by the regular first time buyer. Maybe changing out that downstairs carpet for a nice final wood effect plank or changing out the bathroom carpet with some nice tiles. Both of these will make the property a lot more desirable. Or for another example, changing that metal sink that you might find in a school science classroom to a nice composite sink isn't gonna to be too expensive and is gonna make the property so much more desirable by that regular first time buyer. And again, we can just look at these photos in the bedroom and in the hallway and just see that there's just a bit too much going on. There's pink in the bedroom, white in the hallway, green in the bathroom, yellowy orange downstairs. There's just too many colors and not one consistent color scheme. And on top of that, but if you actually look a little bit closer to these walls in the hallway, you can see they're all stained with these like brown speckles. I don't know if it's where someone's been smoking in the property, but obviously you can see that it's just definitely not a nice crisp white wall. It's obviously very speckled and very stained. So a quick repaint would obviously fix all of this and just make the property, as I said, much more desirable. Now, what am I changing or renovating and why? Let's start back in with the bathroom. So I first removed the bath, the sink, the toilet, all the tiles off the wall and the carpet as well. Now, I guess I could have kept the appliances and just repainted them or restained them white. And I could have kept the tiles and just tiled up to the ceilings and tiled the floor as well. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to really upgrade this property. I wanted to put in a shower. So obviously, firstly, I had to flip the bathtub because at the moment, all the pipe work is underneath the window. And I then wanted to put in a really nice combination sink and toilet combo because those are really modern and really help freshen up and update this property. Now you don't have to break the bank for this kind of upgrade. A combination unit like that is only about 250 to 300 quid, including the loo and the installation kit. And obviously this is a fairly small bathroom, so the tiles for this whole room being floor and all the walls all the way up to the ceiling was around 300 to 400 quid. Moving over to the kitchen, and again, I didn't really want to keep much in here either. The old science lab sink needed to go, and the cabinets were A, from the 80s, and B, had a lot of broken drawers and broken doors and broken shelves. So obviously that kind of just needed to go instead of being repaired. But saying this, I am actually quite a fan of the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's exactly the approach I took to the fridge. So you can see from the photo that the fridge is definitely a newer upgrade and there was nothing broken in the fridge or on the outside of the fridge. So all I had to do was add a cabinet door, the same color as the rest of the kitchen and it was perfect. Now, as I'm replacing the kitchen, this also gave me the opportunity to go for an L shaped kitchen to open up the kitchen and the lounge as one big room instead of keeping the kind of U shaped kitchen that really closes off the room and like separates the kitchen and the lounge. I'm also changing the carpet to some nice gray wood effect vinyl clip flooring and painting all the walls white. I've also decided on a gray quartz countertop instead of the current laminate countertop. The color scheme is very much gonna be white and gray all over the house. White walls and ceilings and gray flooring and white appliances and different bits and pieces like that because it really keeps the color scheme consistent all the way through the house. And I don't wanna say keeps it dull and boring, but keeps it very predictable. And most people out there like gray as a color. So that keeps my target market for this property very wide. Instead of painting the entire property bright pink everywhere, which is obviously gonna very much narrow the target market. Again, in the bedroom, I've repainted all the walls white and the carpet is obviously gonna be a gray. Now, instead of cleaning and repairing the skirting, I've actually decided just to replace it. So why have I done this? Skirting is actually really, really cheap. You can go to B&Q or even an online retailer and buy three meters of skirting for a tenner. So it might cost you 300 pounds to do the entire house. And it's obviously gonna make the property much more desirable. Now there's a few practical upgrades I wanted to do to the property as well. As you can see so far in each room, there's just one central light. 
So I wanted to replace this to two to four recessed lights. And it's quite easy for an electrician to do that. So it just adds that bit extra to the property and really helps lighten up the property and make it look bigger. So lighting can actually have quite a big impact on a property by making it look a lot bigger than it actually is. Now also something that really attracted me to this property was that the windows were all single glazed all around the house. Now who in the UK doesn't have double glazing? So obviously this would have put off a lot of the regular first time buyers from buying this property because they would have had to replace all the windows before they even moved in. And therefore, it just means that there's gonna be less people wanting to buy the property, meaning that I could probably get a good deal. Now, I also did a few fairly cheap EPC upgrades, like adding some extra insulation and changing the heating sources. Now, you can see that I didn't go over the top with this property. I didn't put in a brand new 80,000 pound marble kitchen. I didn't put in some new 5,000 pound chandeliers in each room. I didn't go crazy with a brand new underfloor heating system across the entire house that might cost say 20 grand or something like that as well. I'm just keeping the renovation fairly safe and a little boring. I'm obviously using 15 pound per square meter tiles instead of 100 pound per square meter tiles. It still has the same impact of having nice cold tiles in the bathroom instead of carpet, but obviously it's not going too crazy. This just keeps the target market for the property really broad. So how is it going so far? Let me give you a look around. So to start off, the bedroom is obviously nicely painted and the skirting board is obviously on and stuck. Although I do need to put in the cork to obviously really finish off this skirting board and remove those little gaps. But other than that, the bedroom is pretty much done and ready for the carpet and the furnishings to go in. So the bathroom is obviously all ripped out as well. I do need to do a bit of tidying up of those broken tiles back there and then take the toilet to the dump. But obviously I've got some of the new tiles here ready to go in and I've got the rest of the tiles and the appliances downstairs. Hopefully I can get a plumber around next week probably to obviously install this and maybe a tiler soon after to get the bathroom finished. I do need to repaint the ceiling because obviously there's still a little bit of mold there so I need to get the mold killed and then sealed and then primed and then painted. But hopefully I can do that today before the plumber and the tiler turn up. So the kitchen is also ripped out, but obviously as you can see there's a bathtub in the middle of my kitchen, so that probably needs to go to the dump as well, which hopefully I can do today. The kitchen is ordered and I'm just waiting on delivery, which is probably gonna be a few more weeks, so obviously that gives me some time to get the bathroom tiled and plumbed uh, ready for the kitchen. And these nice new double glazed windows are in as well. Ooh, some skips, I'll take those. But I've also done some other EPC improvements in the property as well. So something I really recommend when doing a renovation is to work top to bottom. And by this, I mean do the bedrooms first and the bathrooms upstairs, and then work downstairs to the kitchen and the hallway. Because obviously the last thing you wanna do is renovate your hallway first, and then a builder brings in the bathtub, scratches the walls on the way up the stairs, and scuffs all of your nice new flooring. Ideally, you wanna work one room at a time, and when you finish that room, you kind of like close the door and lock it off so that no one else is really allowed in that room and can only go in the other rooms and renovate them. That way it stops one of the rooms that are finished getting ruined. If you've made it this far into the video, then be sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my first buy to let property and check out some of my other videos if you haven't already. Also, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. So let's talk numbers. This property actually came up for sale as a probate sale, which is where somebody passes away and leaves the property to their next of kin. Now in my circumstance, the next of kin actually already had two properties of his own. So he didn't really want this one and he just wanted to offload it as quick as possible. So he listed it for a bit of a discount. So I saw this property the day it was listed for 185,000 pounds. I had a quick flick through all the photos to see if I could spot any gleaming problems, such as a broken or damaged roof that would cost a lot to replace, or rising damp all over the house, or collapsing foundations. It didn't have any of these big gleaming issues and I saw potential to upgrade and update the property. So I then went on to right move sold prices to get an idea of prices in the immediate area. The property is on like a small cul-de-sac and every single property on this road is the same size, 
has the same amount of bedrooms, same amount of bathrooms, everything. It's basically just replicas of the same property. So I saw that there'd been five sales on this cul-de-sac between 2017 and 2020. All of the sales were ranging in price between £230,000 and £250,000. So I saw that I obviously had quite a good margin there of profit. So all five of these properties were really in tip-top condition and obviously mine definitely wasn't. Although I don't think I could have really got much of a discount because obviously 185 is much, much lower than that 230 to 250 range. The average sale price in the UK is five to 7% below the list price. So therefore it can often be a really good idea to offer less than the list price. I'll usually start my offer around 10 to 15% below the list price and work up from there. But sometimes it's obviously just not practical. If you're in an area with really high demand or the market is increasing really, really quickly or the property you're looking at is already quite heavily discounted, then you might just have to bite the bullet and offer the list price or even more than the list price. I went to see the property the day after it was listed and made an offer on the same day that was also accepted on the same day. I knew I wasn't going to get much of a discount because obviously the owner had already listed it for a lot less than the recent sales. I also had a feeling that the owner just kind of really wanted to get rid of the property as quick as possible as they already had two of their own because obviously they've inherited this one from the previous owner. I found this out just by asking the estate agent why the property was being sold. Estate agents can give you some really useful information like this to help you paint a picture of why the property is being sold and whether it might be a good investment. The legal fees on this property were £1,500 and there weren't actually any loan set up fees. So I'm actually buying this property as my personal and only home for the moment. Maybe in the future I'll sell it or maybe in the future I'll convert it to a buy to let property but at the moment it's going to be my personal home which meant that I could put down a 10% deposit instead of a 20 or a 25% deposit that you'd need for a buy to let mortgage or bridging finance. As I'm using a residential mortgage because it's going to be my personal and only home, that also means that I didn't have to incur expensive setup fees that you typically incur with a buy to let mortgage or with bridging finance. Now obviously most of the time with residential mortgages, you tend to opt for a fixed rate mortgage. But obviously because I kind of had the idea, because I'm young, that this wasn't going to be my forever home that I plan to live in for 5, 10, 20 years, I decided to opt for a tracker mortgage and obviously that way I don't incur any early repayment charges. I've budgeted the refurb on this property to cost me around 12 to 13,000 pounds. Around 5,000 of that is for the kitchen, two and a half to 3,000 pounds of that is for the bathroom and the rest is for everything else like the flooring, the paint, the windows, maybe some new doors, the lighting and the finishing touches just to make it a proper home like soap dispensers, coffee pots, pots and pans, cutlery, and just everything else really. Because that way I'll be actually able to live in the home and make it my personal and only home. Obviously I can stay here, have dinner, live here and everything else for however long I decide to live here before maybe selling it or converting it to a buy to let property. So all in I'm probably somewhere around 200,000 pounds which is obviously much less than the price that I've seen properties on this same road go for of 230 to 250,000 pounds. Now obviously in the future, if I do decide to sell this property, I'll have to pay selling costs and legal fees. And if I decide to convert onto a buy to let mortgage, I'll have to pay legal fees as well. And I might have to maybe put some more money in to obviously change it from a 10% deposit up to a 20 or a 25% deposit. Or maybe I'll have enough money in the property in equity to do that but I just won't be able to pull out that much money. Pre-pandemic, I could pretty much pull out all of my initial deposit, but nothing else, and maybe not all of my initial deposit, maybe just most of it. But obviously I don't really know how the property market is going to react. At the moment, I don't think the market is gonna crash, but obviously if we do have a second wave, it's very possible, and I've obviously talked a lot more about this in my market crash related videos. Another thing I wanted to add for those that are interested in investing in property but just haven't found a deal good enough at the moment where the figures stack up and they could pull out their entire initial deposit. It is possible to find a property like this but they don't come up every single day or 
two or three properties a day don't come up like this. It took me about five months to find this property of looking on Rightmove twice a day and obviously going to a lot of other viewings and making more offers that got rejected before I found this property. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.